people who work at remote places like forest officers, oil rig workers, etc. What creepy things have you noticed while at work? Part 3. Please make sure you share and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. I work on large ships. If you get a clear view of a hall or passage that runs the whole length, you can actually see the whole ship warp and twist with the sea. If the passage isn't very well lit, it can look like a scene from a horror movie. Account 2. I was a tutor for an elementary school where I would pull out advanced reads and conduct a book club of sorts to encourage kiddos that were ahead of their classmates to still find interest in reading, lol. This was around the time when school shootings were getting really rampant in the U.S. a couple years ago. So there I am, alone with five third graders joking around and having book club in the empty classroom I was allowed to use. All of a sudden, an alarm goes off and an announcement is made that there is an active shooter on campus and we must lock our doors and conduct active shooter protocol. I lose my fucking mind. I usher the students into a little coat closet out of view of the door, lock the door, and flick off the lights. To make it worse, me being a stupid college student at the time, I never had my phone charged. I send as many texts to loved ones as I can, trying not to alarm them, but letting them know I love them and something is happening at work before my phone dies. The students are also afraid, and about 30 minutes passes, I hear footsteps outside of the door and quite literally stop breathing, but they go past. I don't hear any shots or anything. Another 30 minutes pass, and I realize that I should call the front office to see if they have any updates. My brain goes stupid during emergencies, apparently. I forgot that classrooms have built-in phones during my panic. They answer like nothing is wrong, and I say something like, Hi, I'm a tutor here and have five students with me in XYZ room. Is it safe to come out? Are the police here? The woman doesn't answer for a little and dead ass says, Oh, did we not make an all-clear announcement? The drill is over. I was so close to tears and just hung up low L. Then an announcement is made that the drill is over. Nobody thought it would be important to let an outside school contractor know about a drill that very well could have been real. I swear I could have pissed myself. Count three. I spent some time in the peat swamp forests of Borneo studying wild orangutan. We would go into the forest very early around 4 a.m. One morning, there was a clouded leopard on the trail we used to enter the forest. It was just crouched there watching us. We shouted, tried to act big. One of the indigenous people we worked with even took out his slingshot and shot rocks at it. He missed on purpose just trying to scare it off. It stayed there for a good five minutes watching us before it slowly walked into the thick brush off the cleared trail. When we walked by, I shined my light to where it had walked to and could clearly see a pair of reflective eyes only three meters away crouched watching us pass. Creepy, but also incredibly cool to see one in person for how critically endangered they are. Account 4. I work for a medical examiner and used to be on the graveyard shift alone. The first night I was on at midnight on the dot our air system shut off which caused the vents to warp. That shit sounded like somebody running through the vents in the ceiling on all fours. Thankfully, I got used to it, Lowell, but deaf creepy at first. Another night, we lost power, and stupid me watching a horror movie working so hard almost shit my pants when everything went dark, and knowing that a room with around 30 dead bodies in it was walking distance away, that one I stayed in my car for, not to mention the constant long, dark, red-lit hallways. Glad I'm not on overnight now. Account 5. Working on ships, there was one night I was on a ship sailing through Alaskan waters, and it happened to be my first night ever seeing northern lights. I can't believe how awesome that was. It made the sky clear, made the night look like it was dusk. We were able to see clearly for miles. Few buddies and I hit the roof, or what we call. Lido deck at 1 a.m. just to gaze at it. An hour or so in, there was six of us on top, nearly the entire crew now. A big white spotlight shines at us. We were near land, but where the spotlight was, was above the water, and it wasn't low enough to be on a ship. This was very high up. It shined on us for about 15, 20 seconds. 
Once the light turned off, we looked to see what it was. Saw nothing, no trace of an aircraft or anything. Couple minutes go by and the same light shined on us. This time it was on the other side of our vessel, above mountains. Still, unable to see what it was, we all saw it. We all have never seen any aircrafts hovering above these waters, especially at 2 a.m. We don't know what it was. We think it might have been some sort of silenced aircraft. The military was probably doing drills or something. But anyways, that was one of the weirder things to happen out on the ocean. Account 6. I used to work out in the woods in Florida a lot. Creepiest thing would be this day we were working near Big Cypress, tromping through the brush all day. At the end of the day, my co-worker and I do a quick drive-through of some of the property and realize the place was absolutely infested with water moccasins. We had been unknowingly essentially walking around a giant water moccasin pit all day. That one kind of fucked me up. Account 7. We have a PTO pump spot that comes out of a canal for our rice fields. When I was like 12 years old, my uncle found two bodies dumped in the little sump area where our pump sat. Both of the ladies that were dumped there had the same tattoos, so they think it was gang-related, but it was 45 minutes away from where that gang operated. I still look in the hole every time I go by there, and that was 20 years ago. Account 8. Used to teach outdoor education, which was essentially just summer camp during the school year, and school groups would come up and spend a few days at the camp. On their last night, we would always tell them a scary story around the campfire. It was the same scary story every time. We worked in partners, so there were always two staff members for every school group. One staff member would tell the story, and the other staff member would go hide in the forest and make scary noises. So I'm telling the story, and every few minutes there's like a snap of a twig or rustling in the bushes, and of course, as always, the kids all get freaked out and they start getting scared. It's very fun. Well... As I'm telling a story, I'm walking around the campfire looking at all the kids' faces, and I noticed a familiar one. My partner, Eric, sitting there smiling at me, wondering why I'm staring at him. My heart has never started beating so fast in my life. Eventually, I sped through the story and all the kids left, and I explained to Eric that I thought it was him in the woods, and his eyes got very wide, and he said, Are you telling me that that wasn't one of the staff members? So we both ran back to the main road. Account 9. I used to do salmon spawning surveys, which involved walking up streams looking for fish. Some of the streams are quite remote and or inaccessible on timberland, and you don't really expect to see any other person when you're out there. As a naturally smiley, friendly, small, feminine woman, I've learned to be wary of people 100, of the time in the field. I actively try to avoid running into people when I'm alone in remote places. One of the survey locations is close to a highway. To get to it, I had to park at a pullout, follow a river downstream to a flagged trail, hike over a ridge to meet up with an old logging road on private timber land. I walked along the logging road for about 100 minutes before peeling off into the woods very thick second-growth Douglas fir reprode, where game trails eventually lead to the stream at the base of the hill slope, I came here during spring to survey steelhead. But this stream was also a survey location for other types of salmon during the fall. The game trails off of the logging road were flagged by previous surveyors, and multiple routes were marked. This made it kind of confusing, and not all routes actually led to the stream. Some just petered out once the vegetation got too thick. Another led to a cliff face overlooking the riverbed. Lots of faint trails. One day, I turned off into the woods, one of the survey flags tied around a branch at the side of the road. I followed some pink flagging heading south along the hillside. I noticed the trail seemed freshly turned up and figured maybe a bear clambered through recently since the time I was there last two weeks previously. The trail led to a small, claustrophobic clearing, and the ground was freshly torn up in the shape of a circle. Seemed strange. I was looking for elk tracks but didn't see any. Then I noticed an assortment of bones scattered around the edges of the clearing. These weren't there before. Everything was dead silent and something about it was setting me on edge. I poked around the bones a bit, trying to piece together this scene. I noticed another slight path, 
which strayed from my main route, veering to the right from the clearing. I walked a bit down that way and gazed ahead trying to see if this path was flagged. It was densely packed with trees. A subtle movement caught the corner of my eye ahead and to the right as I walked. I turned my head to look past the trees and saw the silhouette of a large shelter maybe about 50 fell and 75 feet from the clearing. It was surrounded by what looked to be jugs and bones. Tons of plastic jugs, light shapes of bones on the ground. The lighting made seeing anything else impossible. Everything was so, so quiet. I left in a hurry, off the trail, without trying to get a better look, without getting to the stream. The alarm bells in my brain were screaming. Account 10. I was serving as a fireman for my nation's compulsory national service. Once, we were called into the forest to retrieve a body who was found hanging on a noose, deep along one of the running trails. He had apparently committed suicide by hanging himself off a tree, was found by a few morning joggers. What's creepy was we found a straw doll at the foot of the tree. It was stabbed with a few red bobby pins in the head, facial area, and there was also an unknown talisman that was half burnt where the doll was sitting. When we took the body down, we had to carry him a few kilometers out of the forest and halfway along the journey, a previously unnoticed wound on his face started bleeding. One of my man swearer that it was bleeding from the same spot as where the bobby pin was stuck on the doll, but we could not confirm it as we left the doll where his body was found for the police, passed the body to the paramedics, and booked our way out of the area. Account 11. Actually, I don't work in remote places, but when my father was sent to Alwar, Rajasthan for archaeological study, I encountered a very strange thing. Our house was near a small forest. One morning, I saw a group of blue bulls, a kind of Asian antelope. They were five in number, and they were running in circles around a skull for like 30 minutes, and then one of them took it into the forest, and they all followed him silently. It was such a weirdo sight, it still gives me creeps. Account 12. I worked in a store once in a really small town that was always absolutely dead. A customer every hour or so shifts all alone too, which I'm sure wasn't even legal, but hey. Anyway, it's a dark evening, and I'm sat on Reddit as usual when I hear the door open. I look up and see the back of a man as he begins walking down the first aisle towards the tin foods, and he appears to be talking to someone on the phone, I think nothing of it, and go back to Reddit. All of a sudden, I get this intense smell of soil and earth. I look up, and the man's approaching the counter, and he's wearing some kind of overalls, and his face and long gray hair and body is just covered in dirt. That's when I notice he isn't on the phone at all, and is just talking to himself in this absolutely bizarre tone. He sounded like a cartoon elf or something. He's just sort of murmuring and doing this really weird hee-hee sort of laugh. I'm just frozen solid, as he stood at the counter in front of me thinking, I'm about to be killed. When a policeman storms through the door, he asks if I'm okay, to which I don't respond because I'm just in a complete state of what the fuck is happening. Tells the man to come outside, to which he starts murmuring gibberish and saying the words legal over and over again. They come grab the man and put him in the back of the police car. And that's the last I ever heard of it. I have no idea who he was, what was going on, but I have never been so afraid of another person before. You know when you just sense a bad, bad situation, so grateful the police showed up when they did. Account 13. I used to do agricultural work, alone in a field for 10 hours a day kind of thing. The pure amount of times I heard the sound of running, snapped up to see literally nothing. There was horrific. I was convinced it was surely animals between the trees for a while, but the weirdest moment was when I heard it loudly from a row of trees next to me, immediately ducked under to see the feet of whatever animal was running by, and there was absolutely nothing. I remember trying to stay calm and walking really fast to the toilet block and sitting in there for a good long while before I came back. I never thought I'd be so freaked out in the daytime, but there wasn't a soul nearby for quite a way. It really amped up my imagination. Account 14. I worked in a salt mine under Lake Erie a couple years ago, and generally speaking, when things are brought down, they're never brought back up. It takes a lot of time to disassemble everything up top, secure and cover the parts, 
and put it back together down below and vice versa so there's tons of old trucks, tractors, and countless other things lined up in the far side of the mine. Anyway, in the 80s, U of Michigan and Cal Irvine were studying proton decay and trying to capture measurements when it actually happened. Conducting this experiment topside is problematic because of cosmic rays and other forms of interference. So the mine was chosen as 2,000 feet of Earth absorbs pretty much everything. So they dug out a pool, about 80 feet by 70 feet, filled it with 2,640,000 gallons of purified water, and put fancy cameras and other equipment along the side. They had a whole shop, lab, and dive center down there. I don't think they ever captured a proton decaying, and eventually the grant money ran out after a few years. So the mine threw up some caution tape on the main steel door leading to the study, and that was that. Fast forward 20 years, and I'm working there as an electrician, and I get a job to fix some big conveyor motor drive. So I set off and try to cannibalize some parts off old equipment. I remember one of the old timers telling me there's a bunch of abandoned equipment in an area by the Kepi lift, the main elevator. I get over there and find a big steel door falling if it's hinges with some very old caution tape laying on the ground. The whole study had to be accessed through this one door, which was dug into the wall, so after a while, the earth slowly crushes, bends, and pushes the ground up. After several tries, I yank the door open and step inside, only to shit myself and fall back when I see a full scuba outfit, wetsuit, mask, belt, gloves, hanging three feet inside. So I collect myself, find that I didn't actually shit myself, how, I'll never know, and go inside, past the goddamn scuba dude. Everything inside was left exactly how it was left 20 years ago, coffee cups left out, day planners, job schedules, along with tons of scuba gear, oxygen-filled tanks, and computers, I make it about 10-ish feet to the edge of the pool. And it's hard to see if the water's still in it because there's no wind to move it. But eventually, I see it's still there. 60 feet of pure water in an absolutely dark pool. The sight of a huge black pool in a huge black hole in the ground, lit only by the small amount of light my cap lamp put out. And the absolute silence of being underground made me really uncomfortable. So I left in a hurry. So that's my story. It's not particularly scary. But all that stuff sitting down there, nearly perfectly preserved in a, such an unexpected place, was always just creepy to me. Account 15. Not exactly at work, but my previous partner was an amateur industrial archaeology photographer, so we were often hiking to semi-remote locations to find abandoned factories, mills, storage facilities, etc. Being pretty far from civilization, they were almost always completely empty. We found syringes and trash in several ones that were closer to cities or towns, and once a homeless person living inside, but nothing ever dangerous or creepy, except once. This was a massive paper mill located over a now dry stream, pretty deep within the mountain. Think a couple hours hike away from the closest village. It was still in decent conditions, all things considered, but definitely abandoned. We'd been in less than half an hour taking pictures of the main building, which was still standing, and had two exit points. One was the main entrance from which we had come in, and the other was the half. Collapsed door that led further into the factory. We were about to move deeper in, when we heard what seemed like several dogs growling and barking aggressively. We figured it was probably another group of hikers with their dogs passing by, so we remained inside and after a couple minutes the growling stopped. We got back at taking pictures of a peculiar pyramid, shaped mound of debris. When the growling started again, but much closer, I was starting to freak out, as I thought it might be rabid dogs, and we had no way to protect ourselves. We tried to gather where they were coming from and move in the other direction, when suddenly the growls and barks turned into screaming, quickly getting closer. We were properly freaked out at that point and started running to the main exit, when a gigantic man covered in rags jumped in from the other entrance, yelling and screaming at us things we couldn't understand in what was surely not our language. We sprinted out of there like crazy and run back to the trail, and didn't stop for a good five minutes before I couldn't keep up anymore and had to stop to breathe. We were terrified. 
but the man hadn't followed us outside the building and likely had no interest in pursuit once he got us to leave. Still, we did the two-hour hike back in a little over one hour, as the scare definitely motivated us. In hindsight, it was probably just a homeless drug addict wanting to be left alone with his dogs, and the language he had screamed at us in was likely a dialect, but the fact that we didn't see any other sign of anyone living there, no trash or clothes or food, and the ghost dogs, plus the remote location left me a very creepy impression of the whole encounter.